My name is Martin Mosho. I've been studying the American Civil War for over 60 years. During the course of my studies, one thing became apparent almost immediately, which is that the women went to war in great numbers between 1861 and 65. They made enormous contributions towards in the American Civil War, but the problem is nobody seems to know about it. And the enormity of their accomplishments is, is not that well known. What I've done is I put together a one-hour program which documents the, uh, the totality of their accomplishments and how they contributed to the war's victory, serving as nurses, as aides, uh, and believe it or not, between 400 and 750 of them actually went to war as a combatant. They fought in several battles. And this program reveals all that. And uh, it, it'll document the, um, uh, what it is they did and, and how they did it, and how they lied to get into the Army to fight as a soldier and how they saved so many Union soldiers under, under, great, under great risk. So it's a program of one hour. I hope you enjoy it, and um, hopefully it'll answer a lot of questions or provide information that most people don't know anything about. When you, when you go visit Civil War battlefields, no matter where you go, Pennsylvania or Virginia or Kentucky or wherever, you're going to see statues of men everywhere and monuments to men. You go to Gettysburg, you see monuments to men but you seldom see any of women. And you do see, there's very few of them. There's one here in, in Boston, Massachusetts. There's another one in Galesburg, uh, Illinois, uh, which is made for Mary Vickerdyke. She was known as Mother Vickerdyke during that particular era. These were nurses. They did incredible things. The statues look alike, but there's two separate ones. Uh, there's also a statue for nuns, nine, eight different orders of nuns served in the Civil War as, as nurses, and it's important to note that uh, more than half of these women, certainly the nuns, they refused to take a dime. They worked for free. Women were also running their husbands' businesses, and they found clerical or administrative jobs. And skills they developed would enhance their equal activities after the war, because now the Civil War is a training ground for these women. They're learning how to become better administrators. Now, of course, even before the war started, there were women who did administrative work, they helped their husbands, some were working. But now the Civil War provides an opportunity for them to expand their presence in the workforce. Uh, lower income women found work in factories making uniforms, motion munitions, and military supplies. And in fact, many participated in the 1863 New York City draft riots. We're gonna get into that in a few minutes. I wanna talk about nurses for a moment, one of my favorite subjects, because my wife's a nurse. Uh, large numbers of women became nurses. At first, only men were returned as, nice, as nurses. Now, you may think, if you're thinking like a person 2050, well, that's discrimination. Well, not so fast. It's 1861, 1865. The reason why women were not wanted as nurses was because it was considered unseemly for a woman to see a man without his clothes on who wasn't her husband or her infant son. Again, the cult of domesticity. They're not exposed to all this. There's no radio, there's no TV, there's no internet. Women aren't, they don't see men without their clothes on unless it's their own husbands. So, uh, however, as the casualties mounted up by 1862, 63, there's thousands and thousands of men going into the hospital for treatment, so they start taking women. They simply needed that. All right, Clara Barton on the Union side was known as the angel of the battlefield. And she was an ardent abolitionist and a suffragette. She worked as a nurse in the combat zone. In fact, she was caring for the wounded. She delivered supplies. She even went into the actual battles while they were still going on. We take a wounded soldier, put him on the wagon, and bring him back. A bullet during the battle actually went through a clothes, but thank God it didn't hurt her. This just went through a dress. She was a remarkable woman. Now, I said there's no woman in this room is eligible to be a nurse, and here's the reason why. They only wanted ugly women. There's no ugly women here. We only see attractive ones. <laughs> However, about three women volunteered as nurses, uh, worked as nurses, if they met the following requirements. They had to be past 30 years of age. Well, some of you would qualify. They had to be plain, almost to repulsion in dress, and devoid of personal attractions. Also, you had to be responsible uh, maternal volunteers who would not distract troops or behave in unseemly or unfeminine ways. So ladies, you have to behave yourselves. But actually, all kidding aside, there was a reason why they had this thing, and it made sense. 
what they didn't want was young flirty girls coming in and because there was a lot of young men in there. You can't be exposed to those kinds of horrible sights that you saw, men without limbs and horrible facial wounds, whatever. It's going to change you. You can't see something like that and, and be the same for the rest of your life. It's going to have an effect on you. The kind of women they attracted accepted this role and they, they did a beautiful job.